Okay, one more video on the uh, EEE PC uh, series that I was working on a while back and gotten back onto it. And keeping the style of it, I'm recording this on it as well. Um, in this one, I'm going to give you a rundown on how to use um, MS Config. Um, for those of you not knowing, MS Config is a program uh, that will let you actually adjust some startup settings and programs that actually are running on your system uh, on startup. Uh, of course, there are other programs to do this, but MS Config is built into Windows. Um, I think the first time it came out was with Windows 98, I do believe. Um, you simply click on your start menu, go to run, and you type in MS Config, as I have here. And you'll basically be shown this system configuration utility screen. Um, for the main screen here, um, unless you are a expert, do not mess with any of this settings there, because um, you can cause your system to have a fit <laughs> if you do not know what you're doing there. Um, things like the system I and I, when I and I, uh, you shouldn't have to ever change anything in here. Um, this is more like for legacy application support when you're talking about Windows uh, XP and later. Uh, pretty much nothing should be putting anything in either of those. The boot I and I, uh, this is again something you really do not want to fool around with unless you're an expert um, because changing something here can prevent Windows from starting up. Um, one thing I will suggest uh, that you should do is you go to your boot 9i tab and you see this advanced options down here go ahead and click on that and for performance tweak uh, you want to go ahead and go to this number of processors here check that and if you hit that drop down list and you see um, two three four I recommend go ahead and selecting the highest number out of that and hitting the OK button. If you have just one, don't bother. It's not going to make a difference. Um, the rest of the settings here are really going to be for adjusting uh, issues with your system. Um, again, something that I'm not going to go into too much on this video. Um, this is more of how to uh, adjust things that are starting up in your system. So. Besides that one, I just did that. <laughs> um, okay, services is um, something a lot of people kind of overlook. Um, first thing you should do is just check the box to hide all Microsoft services, um, because when you start going through and tinkering with Microsoft services themselves, you can cause other things to stop working. Um, as you can see, the Java Quick Starter. I really don't need that to be running every single time. So you just simply uncheck the box there. And that won't start next time. The Office Source Engine. I'm going to uncheck that as well. Now there are some Microsoft services that you can go through and um, shut down. Uh, you know, save yourself a little bit extra resources. Pretty much most of them, though, um, the default configuration is fine. Um, you can go through and um, turn some off. It's more of like a security thing, a performance issue, in my opinion, on that. Um, like fast user switching component. Yeah, you could go through and turn that off because if you're the only person who's going to be using it and you're not going to be switching accounts it's less memory that's going to be used it doesn't have to keep track of other user accounts it doesn't have to keep an extra process running um, believe it or not you can turn off help and support service I don't recommend that because it's always when you do need it when you start it up um, 
TCP IP net BIOS, we're not running net BIOS. And shut that down, I think we're we'll an issue. Uh, I usually leave a lot of these running um, just to prevent things uh, happening. You do see this essential tab uh, column here. Uh, anything that is essential, do not uh, disable it because you will cause issues that will definitely. And I'm just kind of going through my list here, seeing if there's anything. Uh, print spore, if you're not going to print at all with it, you can turn that off. There are some things like volume shadow copy, where I see um, essential isn't there, but if you go through and you disable that, some other programs will stop working. So keep things like that in mind. Um, automatic updates, um, it's best for you to actually go through and do that through the control panel instead of through here. Um, if you see extra services that you're just not going to use ever, um, like let's say um, Java, if I'm never going to run any Java applications, the best thing to do is just uninstall Java. Uh, well, I have a program on there that I'm not going to use. Uh, go to the Startup tab next. This is where you're going to see the majority of the stuff. Um, I like to have my Java go through and update. Um, Java has so many security vulnerabilities nowadays, it seems to be getting patched left and right. It's ridiculous. Same thing with Adobe um, Reader and um, Flash Player. So I let the automatic updates run through for those. Unfortunately, you cannot resize the system configuration window. Um, so it makes it a little bit annoying to try and see exactly what something is. But you can click on a column, resize it. Uh, something I do not need starting up is Adobe. Reader speed launcher. That's that reader underscore SL. Um, the trick here is just knowing what each program is. Uh, if you see a program in here and you're not sure what it is, I recommend typing in the name of it. After expanding this command uh, field, and you know, like going into Google and typing this JUS uh, that will show you or at least give you more information on what this program probably is, what it does. Um, there's a lot of sites out there that are going to tell you if this is a good program, bad program, uh, if it's a spyware program, things of that sort. Uh, some things like for example on this EPC, I'm not going to turn these off. Um, the Zeus Tray application ACPI server um, the PC Mon and uh, where's the power manager and the OS cleaner? I'm not going to turn those off. Um, those actually do help uh, with the system running a little bit better, make some things a little bit easier to use. Uh, a couple entries that you're probably going to see on yours is this IGFX tray, HK, CMD, IGFX, PERS. I see those on almost every system. Uh, most of the time if you go through and you remove them, they come back anyway, so I don't even bother. Uh, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom of the list, you might see a couple that are unchecked. Um, see how this reader is cell up here and another one down here. Notice how that's for Adobe Reader 8. This is for Adobe Reader 9. Um, that's an entry that I had to remove previously. And same with the MSN Messenger. Um, you'll just see those down at the bottom as a result of removing those and having applied the settings when you start the system. And finally, you have the Tools tab. Um, honestly, I've never used this Tools tab. I find it pretty much useless. Um, because almost everything here is another program you can once you're done making your setting changes hit apply once you close out of the configuration utility ask if you want to restart or not uh, go ahead and restart um, so that those changes can take effect make sure your system comes up fine 
and that's it for this video. Uh, if you got any questions, feel free to leave comments below. Uh, if you like the video, please subscribe. And if you have any suggestions for any future videos, please contact me, comments box, uh, anything of that sort of work. Or you can visit the website and contact me that way too. So uh, until next time, I'll see you later.